Let's talk about Toyota Smart Key Systems. Now we're going to give you some good information. It's going to take a bit, but it's still only going to be a fundamental level. I'm going to give you some resources at the end that will help you get even deeper into these because these are the most complex systems of any vehicle theft deterrent system out there. Now first off, as I already talked about earlier with the Prius, there is a little indication, the same applies to Camrys built mid to later 2000s, Prius specifically 04 to 09, the generation two, that had the power button as opposed to a regular mechanical key and a lock cylinder. Those vehicles that did not have smart key, they had, they had transponder key. They had a little chip in them that would do the vehicle theft deterrent but they didn't have smart key. It wasn't a passive deal. You walk up to the car, the car unlocks by itself. You get in and then you push the power button without even having to fish this out of your pocket and away you go. Cars that did not have that, did not have that rubber button you see in that picture. So on the door handle, right next to that little opening for the key is the rubber button. Now, generation, that was an option on generation two you didn't have it with generation 1, 01 to 03 Priuses. They were pretty standard looking cars. But on the hatchback Priuses, 04 to 09, you had an optional smart fob. As I mentioned before, the T on the back of the fob was raised in chrome. And you had those buttons on the front doors and also on the back of the hatch to get into the hatch. Push the button, actually lock the doors. So you could unlock it simply by grabbing the hatch release uh, button that makes the activator work and it unlocked because it sensed that you were close with your fob. On the doors, same thing to unlock, putting your hand in the opening, there's an antenna that senses your hand breaking that little beam. You don't have to pull anything or touch anything, just put your hand in there, it senses it and the doors unlock if the fob and the correct fob is on your person. And the button you see there in the illustration was to lock them. All right, that being said, they all had the power buttons. We'll talk about the significance of the LED inside the power button coming up. So let's go ahead and start getting deep into Toyota Smart Key. First off, I already mentioned Toyota and Lexus. The price of those fobs, $200 plus programming, and you must have the factory scanner to do your initialization or your registration, as Toyota calls it. Uh, <clears throat> if you lose all your keys, you're going to have to do a reset on that certification ECU, the main brain of the Smart Key system, in order to initiate new fob, smart fobs onto the vehicle. There is an emergency key, as many of you well know, it's kind of hidden, but to find a little latch right here and you pull that emergency key out, if a 12 volt system is too low for this to work passively, walk up to the car, it's on me, I stick my hand in the opening for the handle, I hear it unlock, that doesn't work because the voltage gets slightly low. And that is a good symptom and a tech tip for you. If your customer says, you know what, I got to get this thing out and actually hit the unlock button to unlock the doors on my Prius or my Camry. Whereas before, I could just leave this thing in my pocket or my purse, walk up to the car and unlock it. Now there is a button we'll talk about later that will deactivate the smart key system on some models. It says the word key on it and it's under the dash. Uh, straight under the column, you push that button in, that's great if you're doing a hybrid, uh, let's say on the, uh, uh, on the pit, and you're, you're getting ready to go down underneath there, drain the oil out, here comes the service rider by to slide in, to open the door, slide in, and go ahead and read the odometer reading, they put their foot on the brake pedal, this thing is in proximity of the vehicle, and they hit the power button thinking there's going to put the key on but not start the engine and the engine starts. It just happens to be needing to start that moment like hybrids do unpredictably the gas engine starts and now the oil drain plugs out and you know the rest of the story. So to deactivate smart key systems so that won't work even if the service rider did go grab this which when you're working on a a hybrid, you should do anything that's going to involve high voltage or the possibility of the engine running. You should remove this from the vehicle with the dash completely dark, with everything shut off, then remove this and put it several feet away from the vehicle, 10 feet or more. But if the service rider were to grab this guy and walk up, slide across the seat, put their foot on the brake, hit that power button, the engine could, by Murphy's Law, need to start that moment and there goes uh, you know several thousand dollar engine because you did it doing an oil change because the drain plug was already pulled and there was no oil in the motor. So make sure that you do safety on that as well as 
Keep in mind, when your owners are complaining, that feature, passive, doesn't unlock, doesn't work, and they got to do this, it may be the sign that a 12-volt auxiliary battery in the hatch is where they keep them on Priuses, or even a hybrid uh, Camry, that 12-volt auxiliary battery, which does not start the engine, it just makes the accessories and 12-volt modules come to life. One of the first modules that won't work very good are the door oscillators and the certification ECU involved with the smart key fob system. So test the battery when your customer complains that the passive side of their smart key in their Toyota or Lexus is not working properly. Now, next up online here, let's talk about the system and how it's laid out and works. First off, on the newer keyless entry smart key fob Toyota and Lexus, you will have LEDs in the fob. As we'll find out later, the LED is a very helpful technician's assist. Not only does it tell the owner some things, if the owner cared to read the owner's manual, it's gonna tell you, the tech, some things that are working or maybe not working as you check out the smart key fob system. On this Gen 2 Prius, there is no LED I can see here. On the newer ones, there are the LEDs, so keep that in mind. If you wanna do some key registration, the customer wants an, an extra key made, you're gonna need the factory tool, which up through about 08 was the Toyota, uh, they had another name for it, but I call it the Master Tech, the handheld Master Tech, and that's the one that came out before they even had CAN buses on vehicles. So you will have to, on any Toyota's 04 and up that have the smart key system, you will have to have the CAN adapter you see in this picture and go into utility mode, what you talked about earlier, to do a mobilizer key. The same thing for the immobilizer fob. Four is a start for CAN on the Toyotas. Not all the little yellow cards I mentioned with the tool earlier, the, uh, the, text, the Toyota Master Tech, uh, not all of those yellow cards that say Toyota have the immobilizer functions activated in the software. And we'll also find that not everybody who subscribes to Toyota TIS on the web will be able to do the things that the dealer does, but more on that here in a minute. Uh, a little caution on hybrid models, that 12 volt auxiliary battery does not start that gas engine. We mentioned that earlier. And so if it starts to go dead, the first thing you'll notice maybe is the key fob passive nature not working. You will not hear a rrr, rrr, click, 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 click. Because remember, these hybrids don't have 12 volt starters working off 12 volt batteries. They actually start the gas engine with a high voltage battery pack and a big motor generator. Now, where are the components on typical Toyotas with smart key? Well, the, the head component, I'm gonna call it the commanding officer of the ship, is the certification ECU. That module is going to wake up other modules that are involved in smart key system. It's going to ask them to do certain things. They're going to say, aye, aye, sir, and carry out particular commands. This will become more clear in the next few slides. Over as far as to the left from the certification ECU, also buried in that instrument panel, is the ID code box. It is the lock box with a padlock on it, figuratively speaking, electronically speaking, that keeps the files, which basically are the numbers of an electronic key. It'd be like as if you had a set of keys. So the electronic version of keys are in that, that unit and different keys to do different functions. So that's the ID code box. And then the main body ECU, we'll find out on, this is a camera illustrated here, we'll find that that's also called something different. It's in a, I should say, the functionality of smart key on Prius is in another module, we'll come up here later, but on a Camry, it's, it's functioned or it's integrated into the main body ECU. The steering lock ECU is unique to uh, some Lexus and Camrys, not on Prius. They don't lock the steering column on those, but the steering lock ECU will also be another integral factor in our smart key system. Now we have oscillators that are going to uh, basically be like the exciter reader coils that surrounded lock cylinders in our immobilizers we've talked about so far in other makes and models. So the oscillators are physically actually in either doors or in actually and in vehicles. So a front room oscillator for the front seat in the, in the uh, center console 
And then in the back under the seat, a rear room oscillator for the back seat. You'll also find one in the trunk or hatch area and then some in the doors as well, as we'll see here in a second. Up in that C pillar, the sail panel back there on the passenger side by the rear window, called a tuner and I'll say slash antenna. That's for the part of the function of smart key that's really not that smart. It's just a remote keyless entry. That's what that's for. And that's also integrated into this system. So there's my trunk oscillator I mentioned and an antenna for picking up what that fob is going to put out once the oscillator gets its attention. And then also the door handle antennas, your touch sensor and your lock switch and your door oscillator. Now the touch sensor, I mentioned on smart key Priuses and Camrys in the mid 2000s, the rubber buttons. That was your evidence it had smart key. Generation three Priuses, that's 2010 and newer, and newer Camrys and Lexus did away with the rubber buttons. Now they use the touch sensor. The touch sensor is a raised rib on the handle, the top of the handle. So it's painted the same color as the handle. So you don't really notice it, but you kind of see it kind of sticking up a little rib and you put your fingers on it. And if the 12 volt battery is charged up and you got this guy on your person, then you will hear the doors lock. So that's your all door lock for sensing. Also sense when your hand is getting in the opening for it to unlock as well. So that's all built into that door handle. Let's go through some terminology before we get into the systems interaction of each component. Now, the terminology they're using for Toyota and Lexus for their smart fob is called the electronic key. It's going to send out the next two terms on our list, a vehicle ID code that basically says, I'm not just a smart fob Toyota owner, I'm the blue Camry with license plate, yada, yada, and VIN number, such and such. That's the vehicle ID code. And next, once that code is received by the vehicle, it's going to ask the smart key, the electronic key, for the key ID code. So a more specific password, a secret code, if you will. The S code is something generated between modules on the vehicle, as well as the L code on vehicles that have an electronic steering column lock. And then finally, the three bit code and G codes are transmitted between one of the modules that are key to the, the uh, smart key system and the PCM, and then also in the case of the hybrid vehicle, the hybrid ECU, which also needs to know, hey, am I supposed to start the high voltage or not? The PCM also in the middle of this receiving of the G code for G for go and the three bit code and, and basically just like any other mobilizer that PCM needs to know, am I okay to start or do I inhibit starting? So now we got the terms under our belt. Let's look at the systems that laid out. Now I gave some AKA also known as to this Toyota diagram. Now starting as the skipper of the boat, the commanding officer, the certification ECU that was buried under the dash, like I said, that is also known as, AKA, the smart key ECU. So smart key ECU or certification ECU, it is the main executive officer. It's going to be the module that is going to tell the door oscillators when to start making their oscillations to start working. Now these oscillators make an electrical signal, like a radio, low frequency radio signal, 134 kilohertz. So that's somewhere, you know, in the AM band area, very, very low, AM starting at 510 kilohertz. So this is really low frequency radio. Now, when this door certification module sends out this 134 kilohertz signal, it's using some juice from the car, the main 12 volt battery. Even if it's a hybrid, that high voltage battery is not online when the key's off and you're trying to do passive, you know, entrance to the vehicle. So to keep the vehicle's battery, the 12 volt battery, the main battery on a normal vehicle or the auxiliary batteries they call it on hybrid from running down, we increase, and there's my tech tip here, we increase the or extend the time between sending out those 134 kilohertz signals for the fob to see we increase those times, extend the time periods out 
because like, hey, I haven't seen the fob. I've been saying, hey, fob, are you out there? Any fobs out there with 134 kilohertz signal? And if they're there, they respond. If they're in proximity, say a few feet from the vehicle. If they're not there, then after a few hours, the time increases, extends out. And then after days and days, it may even at some point in time, like a 30-day storage period, say, you know what? I've been asking every two hours, for every 20 minutes, whatever, for a FOB's presence. I've got nothing back from any of these guys. I think we've been stored. So it basically shuts off. And that's when your customer says, hmm, I walked up to my car. It didn't unlock. And they went and had to get this out. That still works. What's going on? They may ask him, have you had this FOB in the proximity of that vehicle? Have you stored your car for a while? Because that's normal. And remember, it's not, if it's normal, it's not broke. And if it ain't broke, you can't fix it. So there's a little hello FOB tech tip for you. Now, once the door oscillator has been woke up by the smart ECU, the certification ECU, now it sends a signal out, the FOB is, sees that, responds back and says, I am the FOB for VIN number such and such. That is the VIN, the vehicle ID. And the outside handle antenna sees that through the door oscillator, sends that signal back to the certification ECU, and it says, we're cool with that. You are talking to me. You're not talking to any other car in the parking lot. You're my guy, but I still don't trust you yet. What's the password? So now the certification ECU asks through the door oscillator and antenna on the door, it asks this guy, what is the secret code? And that's the key ID. When the key ID is transmitted by this guy, provided it's been registered properly, and it is for that vehicle, then that is sent back through that antenna and the door, through the oscillator to the certification ECU. If it sees that, it is happy, and its next job, we'll be talking about the ID code box next.